So BitTorrent is super popular when it comes to sharing and distributing large files over the network. But what is the engineering behind it? In this series, we will dive deep into the world of BitTorrent and understand various algorithms that power it. Along the way, we would also try to write our own torrent client to get a deeper understanding. In this first video of this BitTorrent internal series, we take a look at what is a P2P network what is BitTorrent, the core idea behind it, how it makes downloads super fast and conclude with some terminologies that would acquaint us to do a deep dive later. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue. Instead, a small focus group of 50-60 engineers every cohort will be brainstorming systems and designing it together. This way, we build a solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course to date is enrolled by 600 plus engineers spanning 9 cohorts and 10 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The coolest part about the course is the depth we go into and the breadth we cover. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack, to designing our own toy load balancer, to Crickbuzz's live text commentary, to doing impressions counting at scale for any advertisement business. In all, we would cover roughly 28 questions and the detailed curriculum uh, split week by week can be found on the course page which is linked in the description down below. So if you are looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course which you see on the left side and the second one is the recorded course which you can see on the right side. The live cohort based course happens every two months and it will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to binge learn system design, I would highly recommend you going for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss things live with me and the entire cohort and amplify your learnings. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhairi.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I put the link of uh, the course in the description down below. So if you are interested to learn system design, go for it. Check out the link in the description down below and I hope to see you in my next cohort. So BitTorrent is a peer-to-peer -peer protocol that makes the distribution of large files easier faster and efficient. We'll look at all three and how it happens. First, let's understand how we classically download files from the internet, right? And why do we even need something like BitTorrent? So, your client requests a file from the server. Server has the file and it responds, right? Pretty simple download flow. You can do it over HTTP, FTP and whatnot. But things become very interesting when your download size is a little larger. For example, 300 MB, let's say if you want to download a latest version of an Debian OS or Ubuntu, the file size is large. So downloading that one big file from one server gets a little tricky and plus it gets a very, uh, it, it, it becomes very slow. So why? Server has a very limited bandwidth. Right. So if more number of clients connect to it, the download speed would slow down. Right. Second, the speed of the data transfer is limited by the upload capacity of the server. Now, now hear me out. So in most cases, you would see that, hey, when you check your internet connection, you let's say see 100 Mbps download speed, but only 60 Mbps upload speed. Right. So let's say we're trying to download a file. So what would this be dependent on? So for example, A wants to download a file from B, B has upload speed of 60, A has download speed of 100 Mbps. But when A tries to download a file or basically do a, a file transfer from B, although A can download it at 100 Mbps, but B can upload only at 60 Mbps. So no matter how big the download speed of A is, sorry, how large the download speed of A is, it is limited by the upload speed of B. And this is the core problem that BitTorrent uh, tries to address. Right? So can we do better? That is where peer-to-peer -peer network comes in. So in peer-to-peer -peer network, almost like every device can connect to every other device. 
So what it tries to do is it tries to make downloads faster by leveraging the P2P capabilities. So in what is a P2P network? In a peer-to-peer -peer network, every single party, basically every single machine participating in this network have the exact same capabilities. So they are all equal peers and they can initiate conversation with each other. Right? And with the biggest highlight of P2P network is its robustness. And when I say robustness, it means that even if a few nodes crash or are removed from the network, your network is still serving the use case it needs to. So your system doesn't go down and it's not just about outage, but also with respect to the core service that your network is putting. For example, with BitTorrent, the role of a network is to serve the files that you need. Even if a couple of machines are down, other machines would have those files and they would share it with the user that wants it. Right. So there is no single point of failure. There is no uh, thing like service interruptions here if your network is stable enough. Right. Okay. So P2P networks come in two flavors. First is pure P2P network where literally there is no central entity where every node can connect to every other node. But there is another type of P2P network called as hybrid P2P network in which there may be a central entity. So for example, you might want to store some meta information at a central location so that every peer can access it. Not the data itself, but metadata. So this central entity may provide some functionalities to the network. So peer will still connect to each other, but, but basically periodically it may go to the central entity to fetch some, some information, right? And this is, this kind of architecture is what powers BitTorrent. So BitTorrent is not pure P2P network. BitTorrent has a central entity called a tracker and the peers participating in the network, they exist. So they talk to each other, but to understand whom to talk to, they talk to the central entity, which is called as a tracker. We'll dive deep deeper into the, into tracker and implementing it uh, throughout the series, but you get the idea, right? Okay. So now comes the core idea of BitTorrent. So Downloading a file from multiple machines concurrently. This is what it tries to focus on. So the, the, we saw that, that the download speed of a particular file is limited by the upload capacity of the sender, be it a server, be it a user, be it whatnot, right? So if you can download at 100 Mbps, but your upload can only happen at 60 Mbps, your is in the sender's upload can only happen at 60 Mbps, the speed that max that you will get is 60 Mbps. Right. So can we do it better? So this is where the idea is that instead of downloading the file from one machine, what if I distribute this file across my network and I can connect to 50 different clients at the same time and download the same file together. So this is the idea behind BitTorrent. So they are trying to solve problem for fast downloads. Second, upload uh, load is distributed between peers, right? Because now, Every peer might hold some fragment of the file and whoever wants it can, the peer can send it out. So you are still getting larger download speed and upload, the load of the upload is distributed across the network, right? Then large number of downloaders would only put a little extra load on each of the server because it's very distributed. What would happen is, let's say if I add large number of downloaders, it does not mean like earlier, if there was just one server serving the download, then if there are hundred clients connecting, the server needs to serve all hundred clients, it would be taxing on the server. But now given that this is a big P2P network, what would happen is whoever wants to download can talk to any peer at random to get the file chunk. This would make that even if I had large number of downloaders, your servers, the one who are sending the information, they are not overburdened because the load is evenly distributed across the network. This, this is superb. And breaking the file into smaller chunk will boost concurrency. So what would happen is your files is typically split into chunks and they're being distributed over the network. And you know that I want this chunk, I can go to this pair and get this chunk, right? And the, this data is also evenly distributed. So to make it very concurrent, your, you would not make connection to, like you would not just make connection to one peer to download the file. You'll make connections to 50 peers in one shot to download all 50 chunks together. You'll get much faster download speed. 
and this is the beauty of BitTorrent. Right. So let me just walk you through a very simplified download flow right, with BitTorrent. So what would happen is when a user wants to download a file, it sniffs around the network to find the peers having the pieces of it. For this, it uses a tracker. Right. So your user would first go to a tracker and say that, hey, I want this torrent or I want this file. Your tracker would send in the peers that contains the file or that has some information about the file. Right. So this machine or you would then directly connect to the peer and download the file. So user wants the file and let's say that file has four chunks. Right. So it would go to the tracker and say, hey, I want to download this file and this file has these four chunks. Who, to whom should I go to? Your tracker would respond with, hey, these are the machines that you can go to. Your user will talk to the corresponding peers and download the corresponding chunk. Basically, concatenate on the local machine and you have the entire file ready with you. And this is how BitTorrent makes your download super fast because it is concurrently making connections to a lot of different machines, downloading the file and concatenating it locally. Right. Okay. Now let's take a look at nomenclatures and terminologies for that because this would be the heart and soul of the entire discussion of the entire series that we are going to have. Okay. So first, pieces and blocks. So a file that you are putting it on the torrent network is split into pieces. Right. And this piece is the unit of transmission. So you would say, sorry, piece is how is what your peers would serve. And this piece might be, let's say 16 MB. I'm just giving a random number. We'll dive deep into what number it exactly is. Let's say 16 MB piece, right? So each a uh, server can serve a piece. A piece can be 16 MB big, right? A piece is further split into blocks. And in one transfer, a block is transferred. So let's say a block could be 16, uh, a block could be basically 16 KB. So a 16 MB piece, as split into 1016 KB blocks, right? And this 16 KB blocks that you have is what you'll transfer. So in one shot, so when I'm requesting something, I'll get a block. And when I get all the blocks of a piece, I'll say, I have this piece. If any of the block is missing, I'll not say that I have this piece because I'm, I do not have the entire piece. So piece is the, is the, is the unit of information that a server holds. But to do efficient data transfer, it downloads the blocks of the particular piece and then it concatenates it locally. And by concatenating all the pieces, it would have the particular file. Right? So pieces is what a server holds and to do the transfer, it transfers blocks out of it. And then it says that, hey, now I own this particular piece. Right? So for a server to hold a piece, it needs to have all the blocks of that particular piece. Second is called as a peer set. So peer set is a list of peers that can, that it can send pieces to or it can request pieces from. For example, if peer set, like let's say A wants to download a particular file. I have five nodes, A, B, C, D, E. And if I, let's say A wants to download a file, A's peer set as given to it by tracker would be C and E. Which means that if A wants a file, it can get from C and E, right? Or if A wants to send a file, it could send to C and E, right? So that's the peer set of a particular party in the BitTorrent network. Third is an active peer set. So active peers, so peer set may be like, I might have 50 nodes in my peer set, but out of them, only some of them would be active. So what is an active peer set? So Although you might get 50 peers from the tracker, you'll not be connecting to all 50 at once. You'll be connecting to only some of them. So it's a subset of peer set, which you can send data to, or you can receive data from. And this is your active peer set in which you are actively transferring the file. So in order to, in order to uh, keep a check on the overall network traffic that happens within the network, you might have a 50 node peer set, but your active peer set might only be 10, which means actively you are connecting to just 10 peers to download a particular file or to upload a particular file. That is an active peer set, right? Fourth is seeders and leechers. Very offensive term, but it's not meant to be offensive, but uh. So 
in a, in every torrent network you have seeders and you have leachers so what is a seeder seeder is something that holds or that has the file and it tries to seed it in the network so that any leacher in my network can get the file that it wants right so seeder seeds the content in the network while leacher basically tries or leacher is the one who is downloading the content from the seeder right so leacher is the state and once a leacher downloads the complete file it becomes a seeder right so a large number of seeders would lead to a faster download speed as we can pull from multiple seeders so if a torrent only has one seeder would be a classic server client download use case but if you have large number of seeders and fewer leachers your download speed would be really fast and if your leachers are very like like you have large number of leachers and fewer seeders the download speed would take a hit right these were the important nomenclatures which will come in handy in the coming videos of this particular series okay final two points that i would want to conclude on first is bittorrent is very popular friendly which means that the new and the popular files will have a lot of seeders for example a new version of an operating system just released there is a very high chance a lot of people would want to download it right so ubuntu or debian gives official torrent distribution and there would be a lot of seeders seeding the content in the network whoever wants to download it can talk to them and get the files downloaded so you'll have large number of seeders so when a file is new and popular it would get very fast downloads but once it becomes old or unpopular you would have fewer seeders so slower download so this is very popular friendly you would see in a torrent network when something is new and popular you will get very fast download speed otherwise it becomes too slow right now just to conclude few good applications of bittorrent although it is used for very illegal activities or illegal distribution of movies and musics and what not uh but bittorrent legal applications are super good first uh the way it started was to do uh, linux distributions faster than ftp and http so because they are like 500 uh, 500 mb files or the iso images are big enough so to have faster download speed people use bittorrent to download the uh, os uh, to download the os image much faster second sending patches to user for example security patches so you might want to patch the servers in your network and you can have a small bit torrent protocol whose idea is like you put the file in one and your server automatically distributes the file across every single machine and they can then run the patches so massive data centers use bit torrent to power security patches third very interesting facebook uses bit torrent to power their massive massive deployments across servers because imagine if you have a binary that you want to deploy across thousands of servers everyone downloading from this would take so much time fine right? so instead what it does it uses bit torrent splits the file into multiple places and distributes it across the network they they internally converge and every single node would have the entire file eventually so deploying artifacts with this is a breeze and much 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 faster and basically facebook uses it really really well we'll dive deep into the uh, how to actually implement it what protocol it is how to contact tracker and download the file and lot more in uh, basically throughout this series right so yeah that's it for this video i hope you found bit torrent introduction abusing if you did please like this video so uh, apart from this i do i have anything else no nope, it's it's pretty much it right so that's it for this video as part of introduction if you guys like this video give this video a thumbs up if you guys like the channel give this channel a sub this is the first video of the bit torrent internal series and i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton